Well, it's plenty cold enough up here on these passes. Uh, I think it's 21 degrees. So the snow is pretty crispy. I'm just off trying to find a place to take a short nap and yikes. So I think I'm gonna make this part 11. This is, is um, I think it's a good place to stop because the purpose of the origins was to explain kind of the origins of, of where Santa Cruz Batman came from and to explain a little bit the motivation, which was, uh, you know, originally, I just wanted to practice shooting videos on an iPhone, editing them with iMovie on the spot and putting them online using 4G and 5G eventually and Wi-Fi if I could get it. Uh, and it was interesting. And I learned a lot about uh, shooting. I got a lot of exercise in order to keep an iPhone stable without a stabilizer. You have to, it's almost like doing Tai Chi constantly for an hour. And so I found I was getting in shape uh, I was having fun videoing bands. I had an excuse. I remember my wife kind of rolling her eyes. You're going out to shoot videos again tonight. So those times alone, two or three nights a week, some things weren't shooting, video weren't worth shooting, were, uh, a, boy, it, it take time for yourself to go do stuff. If you're in a, a, a relationship, you need to have your time. And hopefully it's something constructive other than sitting around drinking and playing video games. Uh, and so I learned a practical skill in doing that. And, you know, oh, it's kind of hard to shoot stable. And then I played around with stabilizers. I played around with microphones. I learned how wonderful the iPhone is for doing what would have been almost impossible 20 years ago without tens of thousands of dollars of equipment. Um, and I've even run into people shooting videos who do have some of that old expensive equipment and they look and shake their head and they go, God, it passed us up. And that thing only cost what? 800 bucks. A red phone. I had the red phone I seven shooting in 4k because I was inspired a lot by that movie called Tangerine. Um, I believe it's called Tangerine and it's an, it's not an amateur, it's a professional movie, but it was shot on an iPhone 5 with stabilizer and some uh, you know, aftermarket lenses that you can add to make it a little more cinematographic or uh, professional looking. And so I wanted to, you know, I saw the ads for that. I wanted to experience it, and I did. And, and, and meanwhile, just... Uh, Found out how much fun I had just kind of making a diary of all the places you run around that are cool because you forget. And so my wife and I will sit around and we'll watch those sometimes and they'll just start looping. And it's a little bit like going through a scrapbook for me. Um, but of course the channel is more than just that, right? So with the hiatus down in Austin, I only put out, I don't know, maybe half a dozen videos, drag strip videos, which is fun. But I just wasn't really able to spend time doing homeless advocacy. So my heart wasn't really in it. So even though the first hundred or so videos only touched lightly on the homelessness, the nomad lifestyle, um, they were always opportunities to interface with the homeless because those places I go tend to uh, be very artistic, creative, and they attract and retain a lot of uh, Santa Cruz type homeless people, which I find fascinating. Some of the most creative and intelligent people, some are permanent, some kind of come through. So the channel served its original purpose, which was to teach me how to use an iPhone to shoot semi-professional or pretty darn good 4K videos. You know, it's amazing. Add stabilizer. And then I also learned that editing is hard. Uh, editing takes most of your time and, you know, you keep trying to perfect it. Um, and that's a, uh, you know, so now it becomes a job, you know, you shoot 10 minutes of video and sometimes it seems like you're spending three hours playing around with editing it, adding audio and whatnot, which I would understand for a channel that had maybe 10,000 viewers or more, but, uh, for an amateur, 
uh, you know, you have a life. Uh, and so I found iMovie, uh, although fairly restrictive, intuitive, and good enough that, you know, you're not embarrassed by your videos. You have some titles on it. You can do some effects. I I probably use a fraction of what iMovie is capable of. But again, uh, you have to focus on going out and getting the content. And then there's the side that you guys never see the shooting of, of some of the homeless work we do, or I do, or and people I collaborate with. Uh, it's just, it's not appropriate. I mean, there's thousands of hours of situations that would really uh, give you a much bigger picture of some of the things you encounter, but I don't really want to uh, drag people's homeless lives onto the screen uh, unless, you know, it's pertinent or they feel cool about it. So that's why I think this is part 11 and it's probably way too long because it served its purpose. But I just want to remind everybody that the channel going forward might have a lot more homeless advocacy direction rather than just nomad shooting music videos. But at the same time, I found the movie Nomad, which had only one actor and everyone else was real in that, a fascinating movie because I've always dreamed of taking time off and driving around the country with a mountain bike on the back of some sort of RV or large van or sprinter and uh, entering poker tournaments. And uh, that maybe that's going to be part 12 because even though it's not the Santa Cruz Batman channel, poker uh, in a previous marriage uh, actually had a, a legal poker room in the Detroit area that we started as a free poker, but then it turned into a cash room with all Vegas styles. And, and then it, it culminated in in uh, playing, being semi-pro online on full tilt. And my wife got uh, hired for the, uh, uh, the World Series of Poker is not just one tournament, it's hundreds of tournaments. It goes over two and a half months in Vegas. So they have to bring in hundreds of dealers and support staff to put that thing on. So it's kind of like Burning Man for poker. And so uh, she got to run the high stakes tables and at the Rio. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting to actually rent a place, which Vegas is pretty good for, for a short stint. If you need something for a few months, the extended stays are pretty darn good. They're almost as good as an apartment at a fraction of the cost. But poker has always been, uh, uh, once you transition, there's a lot of chess players, especially master chess players, transition into poker. And if you think poker is not a game of skill, then I'd like to play poker with you. But uh, driving around the country and just entering in these, you know, some of them are $300, some of them are thousands of dollars, but you can enter a lot of $100, $200 tournaments. And if you hit, you know, you get a 5K, 10K payday on those things and you have a lot of fun and you can generally stay for free in an RV and I'm sure they won't kick you out if you're just in your car um, if you're kind of hanging out in the club and so the lifestyle of a nomad seeing the sights maybe doing some mountain biking I really shouldn't take up golf I don't like greens fees and uh, just enjoying the country uh, but having a structure to it as something that you do uh, and poker is uh, poker is widespread across the country and there's a lot of variety of casinos and uh, if you're not into poker that's too bad uh, because that's that's quite the that, that's my dream lifestyle is to uh, be a nomad for a year and just go around from poker tournament to poker tournament but I'm finding the homeless advocacy thing a little more uh, you can look yourself in a mirror that you're not wasting your time. And the people I've met and the obligations you feel once you make those connections are time consuming, money consuming, and I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have for poker. I don't know. Either way, they're both very interesting. And, uh, 
I'm glad it's brought me back to my Oregon. Pretty nice little park.